Hallelujah. Everyone on Apostolic TV, thanks for joining us tonight. Those who are here physically, may the Lord touch you first in the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't think I, I, I didn't hear that. Amen. I said, may the Lord locate you first with the blessings of tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Break your Bibles quickly with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter number 16. Listen, tonight is heavy. You don't want to miss out. 1 Samuel chapter number 16. Everyone on Apostolic TV, we sincerely apologize for what happened on Sunday. Um, we lost sound and um, 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 we just had a problem with technical issues which we are working on. So in case there is a cut out, please, we are still working on it. You can see our picture is clearer today. It's more precise and our sound is clearer online. So we are working on our softwares, trying to get better gadgets. Of course, as the Lord provides the resources, we'll do so. But for the time being, we are making most of what we have and we are working on it. And I pray that you will not be distracted or disconnected. But may you receive what the Lord has prepared for you prepare for us as well in jesus name amen first samuel chapter 16 from verse 10 first samuel chapter 16 from verse 10 the bible says in first samuel 16 10 again jesse made seven of his sons pass before samuel and samuel said unto jesse the lord had not chosen this these verse 11 and samuel said unto jesse had I hear all thy children. And he said, There, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. Send and what? Fetch him. For we will not sit until he come either. Verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. And without of a beautiful countenance. Give me F and that key that was on the worship night, please. No, that's not the key. Give me the right key. Now it was of a beaut it was of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him for this is he. Look at verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from, the, from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to what? Ramah. Look at verse 15. This is where Revelation is. Now, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit bring, can I from the Lord troubled him father bless rid of the world in jesus name tonight's word charge is titled when the spirit departs tonight's message is titled when the spirit departs when the spirit departs the bible tells us in first samuel chapter 16 verse 14 it says, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. But prior to the spirit of God departing from Saul, the Bible tells us in verse 13 that Samuel took anointing oil and anointed David in the midst of the brethren and the spirit of the Lord came on David. The spirit of the Lord coming on David triggered the spirit of the Lord departing from Saul. There are many believers who are living today speaking in tongues but don't have the spirit of God in them. They carry a false appearance of righteousness. A false appearance of Holy Ghost, Holy Ghostically filled. A false appearance of power. A false appearance of passion for Christ but the spirit of God is absent in them. There are those who carry a false appearance of godliness. But they are filled with everything that is anti-godly. The spirit of God is absent. There are, there are messages you preach. That is nothing more than motivational speaking. Because why? The spirit of God is absent. It's one thing for a man to carry the spirit of God. But it's another thing for the spirit of God to depart from the man. Many don't pray for the spirit of God to stay. That is why they don't know when the spirit is gone. There is an heresy being preached in our generation that once you receive the spirit of God, it's a permanent resident. It's a lie. 
The Bible tells us about being renewed in spirit seasonally. I'll give you Bible verses. But before we get there, what does it mean to, to define the word? When we define the word depart, what does it mean to depart? To depart means to go away from, to leave something, to turn away from, to turn aside from. The Bible says in Psalm 27 verse 9, Hide not thy face far from me, but put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of thy salvation, my salvation. I not when the Lord hides his face from you, he has departed. When the Lord turns away from a man, the Spirit of God has gone. Listen, I can prophesy, but the Spirit of God is gone. Prophecy doesn't come by the anointing alone. Prophecy is gift. The prophetic is the gift. The Bible says the gift of God is without repentance. So you can be displaying gift, but the Holy Ghost is absent. The Bible says, listen. When Jesus preached, the power of God was present to heal them that were sick. That is, that is the presence of the Spirit. I don't need to touch you before you are healed. When the Spirit of God is in operation, whilst ministration is in, in, in operation, people get healed already. People get delivered. People get liberated. People get set free. People get, they get liberty without the touch of the man of God. That is the presence of the Spirit. But we live in a dispensation where we cannot differentiate anymore between entertainment, the display of gift, and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Hide not your face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. O God of my salvation. Look at Psalm 51. We read from verse 10 to 13 together. Psalm 51 verse 10 to 13. It says, create in me. We should know that already. Psalm 50, it's, a, it's a popular song. Is it create, create in me a clean. Is that F? Oh Lord. And renew a right spirit. It's not a song. It's a Bible verse. We sing song, we don't understand what we are doing. Some feet, please don't do that and go and sit down so you can learn get the word. Or precious without the word of God, you turn to people that have been in church 20 years, nobody's growing. Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. You see, the right spirit needs MOT. How many of you drive? When I did take your car for MOT, on Monday, I even fairly recent. When I take a car for MOT, some months ago, uh -huh. if we can MOT our vehicle, but yet we fail to MOT our spirit, creating me a clean heart, oh Lord, please take it back and flow with me. What are you putting on the screen? Creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. It says, cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit. Take not your spirit from me. You see that? Do not take it away from me. Many don't pray for the Spirit to stay rest. See, the Holy Spirit leaves people. The Holy Spirit leaves people. And when the Holy Spirit is gone, there is some personality traits I would, I would tell you that you will see in them. There are two types of personality traits when the Holy Spirit is in someone and when the Holy Spirit is absent. Cast me not away from thy presence of God. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of salvation and renew. It says, look at that. And uphold me with thy what? Free spirit. So it is the spirit of God that keeps a man's salvation upheld. It is the spirit of God that keeps your salvation upheld. It is the spirit of God that keeps your salvation sustained. It is the spirit of God that keeps you going. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy what? Free spirit. I want to pray that whosoever 
wants a renewal of spirit tonight my prayer for you is that that spirit the spirit of God in you is renewed and it is refreshed in the name of Jesus it says take not do not take your Holy Spirit from me you can be see you can be anointed but yet the absence of the Holy Spirit is present you can be preaching but no Holy Spirit anymore you can carry pastoral and bishop bishop title but yet Holy Ghost is missing you just be displaying spiritus <laughs> spiritus eh? you'll be displaying spirit spiritus is false Holy Spirit spiritus may you not be a spiritus person now, please, quick. I have a few questions. Please sit down before we go to the next part of the message. How, how are you sure you still have the Holy Spirit? That's the question. How are you sure you still have the Holy Spirit? How? How are you sure you still have the Holy Spirit? But man of God, I call the Holy Spirit is everlasting. Who says so? There are many people the Holy Spirit has left them. They are manifesting spiritus. Spiritus. We learned that one recently. Spiritus. Number two question. As the Holy Spirit departed from you, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. As the Holy Spirit departed from you or do you still have the Holy Spirit? Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. 1 Corinthians 10 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. It says, wherefore, let him that thinketh his standeth, take it, lest he fall. Sometimes you are thinking you are, you are standing, but you are falling a long time ago. Sometimes you think you are in God, but not knowing you are in the mud. You think you are standing on a, on a short ground, but the Lord is saying you are on the clay ground of backsliding. When a man is backsliding, he doesn't know. One of the signs of the absence of the Holy Ghost is when fire in the eyes of a believer is gone. I can, I know those praying when I look into their eyes. When I look into people's eyes, I know if they are prayerful. When you look into my eyes, do I look like a praying man? How, how can you tell? You can feel it. So you can feel people that pray. Eh? Do I, does my eye tell you that I pray? Ah, uh, okay. Some people be doing shaka 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 shaka. That's all they know. Shaka shaka shaka. Pray, they don't pray. He that thinketh is done. Take it, lest thou what you fall. Now I want to give us some quick pointers. I'm breezing through this very quickly. Write it down. Six points on how to know when the spirit has departed. Six ways. On how to know when the spirit has departed. Tonight is titled, When the Spirit Departs. How do you know when the spirit has departed? Number one. You will operate and feel emptiness. How do you know when the spirit of God, please, this is not a time to be distracted by anyone. Even everything about everyone listen. Write, take your notepad, write. Because many of us, we are very good in operations in church, but we are very poor in growing in God. Many are in church, but not in Christ. Uh -huh. Many are in church, but not in Christ. How do you know when the spirit is departed? Number one, you will operate and feel emptiness. You will operate in emptiness and you will, the feeling of emptiness will be present. You will operate and feel emptiness. Judges chapter 16 verse 18 to 20. Judges 16 verse 18 to 20. It tells us about the man called Samson. Samson was with Delilah. The Bible says in verse 18, the Bible says, And Samson told Delilah his heart. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up, up unto, unto her, 
and brought money in their hands. Child of God, to keep your fire and your oil, you must keep your mouth shut. To keep your fire. You, I will never tell you the secret of God's call upon my life. It's a lie. I will not tell you my... I will not tell you the secret of my mountain place. I can tell you how I pray, but I won't tell you what happens there. It's me and God. Many talk too much. You know I want to spend time with God. Who cares? You want to spend time with God? Why, should, why must you announce it? Do I announce that I want to spend time with mama in the night? I just entered the bedroom. I said, woman, get ready. We're coming. That's right. We just entered the bedroom. On me, get ready. The Lord is in the house. I don't need to say and put an Instagram tweet. Is it a tweet on Instagram or whatever? They I want to listen, guys. Um, um, hashtag, hashtag, pastor. Um, I, I want to go and meet my wife. Do I do I do you understand me? Do, I, do, I, do you just start tweeting on Instagram or you tweeting on Facebook? I'm about to enter my wife. Please, everybody, give me time. You want to spend time with God? It should be second nature. It's praying the Bible says without ceasing. Man ought to pray and not faint. Man ought to seek the face of God and not faint. When you start telling me you want to pray, it means you are not praying at all. Praying should be a lifestyle because when praying becomes a lifestyle, fire becomes the fruit. Fire is the fruit. Intensity is your fruit. Momentum is your fruit. When you backslide and you are empty, it means the spirit is gone. Man of God, I want to go and spend three days on the mountain. You are telling me that? You can climb Kilimanjaro and God don't meet you there. And whereas you climb the toilet seat in your house, once you are you are dropping the doo-doo in the morning, doo-doo, 7 a.m. You are mm, as you are mm, the Holy Ghost is speaking. Mm, he says, son, mm, the doo-doo, doo-doo. I, 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 I you want to know in my house, one of the most anointed places is our toilet. Mama knows in my house. One of the most anointed places in my house is the toilet. Whenever I enter there, I come out with prophetic release. I will just say, some, there, there, was a, there, there are times when I am having my bath. I will just run out with my towel. Hey, give me my book, give me my book. The Lord just gave me revelation. With the doo-doo hanging and I am sweating, I am there writing revelation. Are you understanding me? Many of you, you want to climb Kilimanjaro. When we are climbing Kili Toilet Jaro, we are on the toilet seat and the Lord is sitting with us. Hey. Even despite the smell of the doo-doo, the Lord is still giving me revelation. Can I prophesy? Yes, sir. The revelation that will make you stand out receive it this night. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you understanding me? Don't follow religious folks. They want to go to the mountain. Prophetic fabric. When God can talk to you in your bedroom. Religious pride, my God, spiritus. Religious pride equals spiritus. The most anointed men are not the men that climb mountain to pray. They are the men that do the simple things very well for God. Who is it that despise the days of small beginning? Whosoever is faithful in little. Are you understanding me? Stop, stop, stop extravagalizing everything. Stop exaggerating everything. God is not complicated. You have become complicated and the Holy Spirit cannot phantom you anymore. So he departs and he leaves you empty and you start blaming everything. No, sister, brother, spiritus. Spiritus. Mashabalakadash. Hey! Am I communicating here? You will operate in emptiness and feeling empty. 
the book of Judges chapter 16 verse 18 after Samson told Delilah his heart the Bible says Delilah caught the loss of the Philistines and in verse 19 the Bible says that when Samson Delilah said Samson get up get up for the loss of the Philistines are here Samson got up like like it was in the past where the power and the spirit of God was seen on him when he got up he realized something was missing his strength went from him something was gone the strength there was the spirit of God something that would go out and one move will knock down a thousand Philistines the same something could not pull down one man one man when you did when the spirit of God is missing you lose strength If you are having fatigue, 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 brother, you have become too obese in the spirit. You need something different. You need to go back to the gym. His strength left him. He realized that his strength had left him. It means the spirit of God was absent. One of the signs of the presence of the Holy Ghost is strength. For my grace is made perfect. In your weakness not in sin in your weakness meaning when you're feeling tired and you want to go and do the things of god it strengthens you it strengthens you to go samson realized that his strength had left him whosoever has lost strength tonight by the holy ghost you are recovering strength whoever is feeling empty i say you, tonight you are refilled amen you are refilled amen in the name of jesus amen number two how do you know when the spirit has departed number two you become repulsive towards godly directives you become repulsive towards godly directives how do you know when the spirit has gone when the spirit of god has departed from you number two i said you become repulsive towards godly operate towards godly directives you become repulsive towards what godly directives what does it mean to be repulsive repulsive is having an arousing and an intense distaste or disgust suddenly everything that you enjoy doing for god you start it start irritating you church start irritating you light start irritating you everything that made i was glad when they say let us go into the house of god the gladness of church disappears and you find joy sleeping on your bed you become repulsive you become repulsive you become repulsive to godly directive the simple instruction from your pastor that you will easily take without arguing in the past suddenly your pastor's word in fact when you hear your pastor's voice it irritates you the devil is inside already oh. Oh. In the presence of God is fullness of joy and at the right hand of pleasures forevermore. Child of God, you can't be in God's presence and lack joy. It's in the presence you find joy. Yes, so when the presence of God starts irritating you, when you start feeling disgusted by church, it means the spirit of God has gone. That's right, sir. Departed from you. You become repulsive to godly directives. Who is it to tell me what to do but the same man you are talking about was the one that delivered you from the chains that made you free something is too young or too small to talk to you does he know my age but when you were in bondage is the same small boy that brought you out of the bondage now you've become of age he's a nobody you become repulsive to godly directives when the spirit of god has departed from you i don't see the, see the most dangerous people in church are ministers that's true that's true say again sir mm -hmm. the most dangerous people in church are ministers the ones you pour oil on their head suddenly they think they are anointed than you 
I remember when Bishop David Oyedepo, he had to sack 400 pastors. Was it 2000? It was 400, the one I had. So it was even up to 2000. Jesus. You see the dangers. The most see, what you should avoid see, if oil touch your head. Listen, listen. You can never fight the man that poured oil on your head. Your head will crumble. A man that poured oil on your head and placed hand on it has put a seal of grace over you. You can't fight him. The only way you can escape is by denouncing him and walking away. But if he's the one that is meant to liberate your life, wherever you go, you will still come back. Am I communicating here? Mashadash. You begin to walk with a repulsive spirit to a, to a, against and towards godly directives. What does it mean to be repulsive? Meaning you become a horrible and a disgusting person that nobody wants to be around. A man who is filled with the spirit of God is a man that attracts people. This lady is coming all the way from Essex. Deep Essex to be here. On a Wednesday evening. And some ordained ministers are at home. On Sunday they want to carry their big, big head and hold microphone. We shove it down their neck. Not this church. The moment I, Apostle John, think I am everything, God will replace me with a baby. He will replace me with a baby. For God is not a respecter of persons. When the spirit has departed, your, see, your absence in church becomes more than your presence in church. Some people are only present when there is a big, if I put a conference there, five nights of power. This place, boy, everybody, power, you see people flying. Ministers want to come and hold my microphone and be walking like frogs that's got boiled between their legs. Is that what the church has done to? Your papa is laboring. A son is sitting at home. But yet, you want to catch mantu. Which mantu? What mantu? That's, how, that's why our generation not many are being used by God because they are not ready to pay the price of the fathers. That's right. That's right. Am I communicating? They are not ready to pay the price of the fathers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 7 to 12. 1 Samuel 18, verse 7 to 12. It tells us about Saul. When Saul heard that the, way, the women were dancing to David, praising God for David's life. Oh, Saul killed in a thousand, David kills in a ten thousand. And Saul became very angry and bitter. Saul became repulsive. He became irritated by the same David that God used to liberate Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Can we adjust that to the back? Number three, how do you know that the spirit has departed? Number three, how do you know that the spirit has departed? You will be possessed by demons. Can we adjust that at the back? And take this thing off the screen. I've moved past that a long time ago. You will be possessed by demons. How do you know when the spirit of God has departed from a man? He will be possessed by demons. That is why, for if, if you are following my ministry, in detail, I don't just conduct deliverance. Do you know why? There are some demons in some people that God himself puts there. So if you go cast out the demons, the demons will enter you. It's not everybody you deliver. Some people need to stay with the demon for some time to learn lessons. That's why some people come to me for deliverance. I say, sister, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. Because the Lord will say, this one, don't touch. There are times, I've lifted up my hand to pray for someone. The Lord said, don't touch them, don't touch. Lift them. I just say, sister, you're on your home. I move away. Because I don't want to take demon home. There is, I don't have enough room in my house for another demon. <laughs> no, no. No more room. My house is God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, my children, my wife, myself. Spare room for studio. That's all I have. I don't have any other room for demon. 
sorry. I won't take someone's demon home free of charge. It's not an, it's not an asset. Demons are not assets. <laughs> She's cracking up tonight. <laughs> are you understanding me? Demons are not assets. I see some ministers. Is, uh, you just want to show you have power. You are touching everybody's head. Don't worry. Be collecting their demons. You think it's everybody you pray for. There are some people that say, man of God, pray for me. I don't pray for them. I'll say, sister, what you need is counseling, not prayer. You need counseling. When you first connected, what did I tell you? I said, you need to find, return yourself back to the presence of what? Of God. And since then, bam, she does miss church. Senior, Senior Waters testified on Sunday. I read his testimony. They sacked him from work. You know what I told him? I said, return back to church. Find God again. Pray. And he did so. The same job called him back and gave him the job. In this country. In this country. Once they fire you, they fire you. They called him back and gave, with an apology gave him the job back. After two months of absence. Are you understanding me? Possession by demons is the, is the, it becomes the order of the day when the spirit of God has departed from a man. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 to 15. Oh, pastor, you know, uh, you know I, I cannot make it. I don't have enough money to be coming to church on Wednesdays. Oh, pastor, is, I, I'm a bank. I'm a bank, eh? All I, I, just go to, I, just go to, I just go to my bedroom. Masha ka, 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 ka. dollars flies out and I go to church. I have a printing machine under my bed. Amen. They, see, there is no excuse when it comes to being in God's presence. That's true, sir. No excuse. When I was living in London as a young man, well, I'm not an old man, I'm still young. Yes, sir. Um, as a younger man, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Abewood to Stockwell every Sunday. Wow. And I will be the first to arrive and last to leave. And nobody will know. Abewood to Stockwell. If I am lucky, I will jump a bus. See me jumping bus with Bible. When the ticket men are coming, I will follow the other door out. I will be speaking in tongues to avoid being caught. <laughs> And you are telling me. Be careful. There are people in church that will want to justify why they miss the presence of God. By They will give you all the legal reason. Mm. I have preached when I was sick. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. I have gotten to a conference. I was sick. Sick. In my body. Sick. I said, Lord, I have prayed. I have commanded this devil to go. But the moment I hold the mic and I said, lift your hands up and just bless the Lord. This, this sickness pia, disappears. There are times God wants to see. Would you serve me in sickness and in health? Would you love me in pain and in gain? Or you want to love me in glory, not in sorrow? Apostle Paul says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? We quote this scripture, but are we living? Do we understand what we are saying? I should clap for you. Do you know how many times mama has come to church very sick? And I will pray, I will say, Father, this sickness goes. So, sometimes I will just lay my hands on this. The sickness disappears. Sometimes the Lord will not answer me. The Lord wants to see if she will give me or her, me or him, excuse. As soon as she walks through the doors, she just goes, you know, I don't feel the sickness is gone. The Lord wants to say, how committed are you? Many of us, we are serving God conditionally, but we want an unconditional blessing from him. Mm. You give God timetable on how you serve him. People say, ah, the, uh, uh, Pastor, you don't talk like that. Who, 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 gives, who, who gives a damn? If you don't like what I'm preaching, go and find another church. The church is not the building. The church is the, the church is a gathering of saints, not a gathering of repulsiveness. To know when the spirit of God has departed.
an evil spirit from God trouble him. You see that? It's not everybody you pray for. Some people you leave them to God and the devil in them. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Some, oh, pastor, I'm getting spiritual attacks. Sometimes God is the one that sent the spirit to attack you. Because you took his spirit for granted when his spirit was in you. Are you listening to me, everyone? An evil spirit from God. Are we final line now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. An evil spirit from God, what? Entered Saul. May we not, we, may we not be afflicted by evil spirit. May God not afflict you with any evil spirit. Amen. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. See, listen. Listen to me. When a man attacks you, the devil can save you. When the devil afflicts you, God will save you. If you call on God. But if God afflicts you, who will save you? Who can save you if God afflicts you? God is the one himself that afflicted Saul with evil spirits after he withdrew his own spirits. You see, in, in St. Vincent, I was prophesying about God coming hard on, in the Caribbean island. They said, I'm a wicked, I'm a stupid prophet. What kind of stupid prophet am I? In, in, God is not a killer. God does not do this. God, I'm a... Look at, read your Bible, First Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, verse 15, verse 17, 18, 19, 20. God invaded and infested Saul with evil spirits. God. God kills and makes it alive. He kills and makes alive. I don't know the kind of God they've seen in the Caribbean island. I don't know. The bread and butter God. I don't know the God we serve in our generation. An Hollywood Jesus with very nice, well polished and brushed brunettes. Two fingers and well manicured fingers. And he's got a very shiny lips like someone using lip gloss. Very well shaped eyebrow like a gay man. That is the Jesus that the church is worshipping. The one I know is tough. He had the gain. He flogged people out of the temple. He said, my father's house shall not be a house of trade and butter, but a house of prayer. And he picked up the whip and he flogged them out of the church. It's time to return to that Jesus so that salvation will be secured. And light will fill the earth. He kill it and make it alive. If you talk, they say this man don't know God. This man don't love God. He's a hater of God. This man doesn't know anything. Doesn't love God. How can God put evil spirits in a man? The moment the spirit of God is left to you, evil spirits occupy you. Even the Bible says it. When, when, when a man is delivered from evil spirits and the room is clean, the room, the room of his heart is clean, he says, quickly fill that room with the spirit of God. If not, that same spirit that was cast out will go to the desert, wander in dry places and come back to see if your room is still empty. Then he's going to go back, take seven more wicked spirits and they will come and take They will turn your house to a resort park. Your heart to a resort park. And you call me a wicked man. If you don't know your Bible, shut up. I read Bible. I study my word. Back to front to back, back to front. Every day. I refresh myself. God sent Jonah to Nineveh. He told the wicked king and the leaders. You people should pray. Someone was telling me in St. Vincent. How can I be telling the wicked prime minister to lead the nation in prayer? Sorry. Do you know your Bible? Am I the one now experiencing volcano and inhaling hash and getting high on it? When God sends his word, he sends his word to save the people. Possession of demons 
If you look at the same first Samuel chapter 16, verse 17, it says, And Saul said unto his servant, Provide me now as a man that can play well and bring him to me. Look at verse, verse 21. And David came unto came to Saul and stood before him, and, and he loved him greatly and became his armor bearer. Verse 22. And Saul said, and Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he had found favor in my sight. Verse 23. Look at that. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from who? Mashadash. The evil spirit from hell, from Saul's father's house, from the water spirit, no, sir. Illuminati spirit, mountain spirit, no, sir. valley spirit, Ikenga spirit, St. Lucia spirit, Jamaica spirit, Patwa spirit from God. When the spirit from God was upon Saul, upon Saul, the evil spirit, then David took an app and started playing. So when Saul was refreshed and was well, the evil spirit departed from him. You see David with the spirit of God playing. How can you be a musician and you play? Holy Ghost don't move. You will get up from the keyboard and join the crowd. How can you pull strings and evil spirits stay in people? Mm. You are nothing more than Jay-Z. How can you pull strings and demons stay in people? You are nothing more than, than Pharrell Williams. You and Stephen Wonder goes to the same church. You play strings, anointing don't come down. You are nothing more than Nelly. No matter what you do, Holy Spirit cannot come. Are you understanding me? These are the things that we don't teach in church anymore for people to wake up. I'm not, I'm not talking about perfect people. I'm just talking about people that say, you know what, well, Lord? I'm just here. Use me in my own, in the way you want to use me. But I am available. The moment you justify sicknesses and you justify pain, you justify lack over your presence in God, in the things of God, the spirit has departed from you. Gone! Gone! I can tell you men of God who preached and their wives were dying at home. Oedipo was preaching. Mrs. Mama Faith Oedipo was dying on the bed and he went to preach in countries. His wife was dying. Paralyzed on the bed, dead on the bed, and he was preaching up and down. Mm. There was a Ghanaian pastor ahead of who was going to preach. He was about to climb the altar when they told him that his wife and his children had just had a fatal accident and everyone died. He was about to climb the altar. He had the choice should I preach or should I go? He stood, mm. he stood, he stood, but with pain, he climbed the altar to preach. That's right. And that service was one of the most anointed service. His wife had just died. Children just died. Accident. And you, you have a, you, you are, you are excuse, you're giving God the, when someone lost his whole family to preach, you are giving God the excuse. The spirit of God has departed from you. We don't preach messages that make everybody think again. We preach messages that make everyone excited. See, listen, if you want to know if you have been, if you have been under an anointed ministration, the ministration must make you think, reflect, not excited. Number four. How do you know that the spirit has departed from you? You will walk with the spirit of jeopardy. Operating 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 with the spirit of jeopardy. What is the spirit of jeopardy? If it is not me, it should not work. If I'm not in charge of the department, it should not work. If I'm not the one that plans the program, the program should not go well. 
fired. If I'm not in church, the church service should crash so they will know that because I was not there. You lie because Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. The spirit of jeopardy is when you come to church and you are praying everything should fail. Because why? You refuse to step up to the plate when God wants people to be counted and to be used. Saul had the spirit of jeopardy in him because the Holy Ghost was gone. Why? Everything, see, his plan was to kill David, whereas David was God's vision for Israel. So, to, to, to feel like, okay, it, because it's not me, David must not live. He started strategizing how to kill him, how to pin him with his spear to the wall. There are those of you who have been pinned to the spear by the souls who were once anointed. Don't give in to their nonsense. Apostle Paul told Timothy, don't let anybody despise you in the days of your youth. For God to use you is not by your gender or by your age, it's by availability. You walk with the spirit of jeopardy when the spirit of God has left you. Because why? There is nobody that wants to see God's work prosper and want to jeopardize it. There is nobody. There is nobody. Spirit of jeopardy. Spirit of jeopardy. You want to jeopardize everything. What is the spirit of jeopardy? You become a fault finder in mm. everyone that is doing better than you. Mm. You become a fault finder in everyone doing better than you. Because those kind of people, they want to be the one that everyone claps for. They are too big to clap for others. They are too big to say, sister, you're doing well. They are too big to say, brother, you're doing well. They're too big to say that young man being used by God is doing well. Spirit of what? Jopadi. So anything to those kind of people, they see, listen to me. They pray for the day bad news goes, goes, goes around about you. They wait for bad news. They spread your bad news over all the good things you have done. Spirit of Jopadi. Spirit of Jopadi. When the spirit has departed from a man, the spirit of jeopardy is what fills the man. It's one of the traits you see. This spirit of jeopardy makes them find fault. They become fault finders in everything someone else do. This only is just to make them feel good and justify their own wickedness. How do you know someone is operating with the spirit of jeopardy? They always operate with the spirit of bitterness. When bitterness has filled their hearts. If you can no longer find joy in God's presence, bitterness is there. It means the Holy Ghost has left you. The Holy Ghost cannot be present and you lack joy. The Holy Spirit cannot be present in you and joy is absent. The fruit of the Holy Ghost is joy. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. And do you know why these people walk with the spirit of bitter, um, jeopardy? It's because all they love is vain glory. Vain glory. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Vain glory. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Look at what it says. Philippians 2, verse 3. Vain glory. Vain glory. Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through strife or what? Please open your mouth. Let nothing be done through what? Strife or, or what? Vain glory. Are you on the computer there? In the studio booth to show. Hmm. <laughs> Are you on um, 
studio booth there, switcher, to show that you are the best. You can flick it and flip it and lick everything there. Some people, you put them in a position. God managed to put them on a chair. The work there is the, the chair is for them to walk. What they do is they hug the chair, they tie the chair. Whenever they are going up, they carry the chair home. 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 This is how they carry the chair home. Vain glory. Then suddenly, listen to me. The walk, listen, the walk with Jesus is already straight. I'm sharing the revelation. It's already straight and narrow. You now carry the, the pursuit of vain glory upon your head. The one they didn't tell you to do. You do your own and let someone they want to carry it tied to themselves. They start getting oppressed by the walk. Mm. The Lord, Jesus didn't put on them. They blame church. They backslide. They blame pastor. They blame everybody. But if you check, who put the load on your head? Mm. Nobody. Vain glory. Vain glory. Let nothing be done with what in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done. Let nothing be done. Let nothing be done with true strife of vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Child of God, when you are walking, praise your sister more than you praise yourself. Some people, Pastor, we pray for them to be healed. When they come and share testimony, they will now share the testimony and say, well, I, I, I prayed and God told me and God touched me. Ah. I have seen things in my in ministry and still can't see. If you have anybody in any department of this ministry who esteem themselves more, kick them out of that department. You have my license. Thank you, sir. Kick them out, pastor or minister. Out hey. that is why, in this ministry, even when I prophesy to people, I don't allow anybody to call me any nickname. Mm. I do. Papa, do it, do it, do it, do it. Go deeper, deeper, scatter, scatter, scatter. Hey, hey, Jesus is not called. No praise, no reverence, no worship. Papa, Papa, when men are having titles, they praise themselves more than they praise Jesus. Do it with all loneliness. Praising others more than you praise yourself. Look at me. Everybody in the department. Praising your teammates more than you praise yourself. Listen to me. In, in Africa, I don't know if you have it in the Caribbean, because I know I've not seen it in England. There is what we call a lizard. Do you know what a lizard is? Yes, sir. A lizard. Alangba. Those born in England will not know what a lizard is. <laughs> but a lizard back home, a lizard falls off the tree or falls off a wall. When it lands, this is what a lizard does. It's only a lizard that does something and heals himself. Many believers have lizard spirits. Everything they do, they praise themselves. Everything they touch, they praise themselves. They want to be, they, they want to be seen, they want to be seen doing things in the open, but yet not have any secret work. Everything you see in the open is not backed by secret prayer. It's not backed by good love for someone else. They want the praise to be about them, and if and if it's not about them, they want it to be what jeopardized. If it's not about them, it should not work out. If it's not about them, nothing good should happen. If it's not about them, the service should not go well. But I, 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 I am yet to tell you something. In fact, your absence produces the presence of greater people. Go and ask Saul. After Saul was removed, a, the greatest king, David, took over Israel. David is the only king that never lost a war in battle in his life and through his reign. Even before he became a king, he was still fighting and winning battles for Saul. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? Spirit of Jopani. Let nothing be done with stri true strife or what? I want to put it on the screen. Put it on the screen. 
drop that camera and look at the screen. Every worker, look at it. Every open your oh, open your eye. Open your eye. Your eyes not open. Open it. Let me see. Uh, open your eye. Open it. Open it. Your eyes closing. Are you sleeping? Open your eye. Open it wide. Open your eye wide. Wide, wide. It's, no, no, wide, wide. Uh -huh. Everyone online, open your eyes and see. Let nothing be done through strife. Love and strife don't stay in the same roof, under the same roof. Let nothing be done through vain glory. If, if they don't clap for me, if they don't clap for me, then it should not be well for someone else. Why are they clapping for her? Mm. Do you know I'm anointed? Anna? I've met some ladies that came across my ministry. They, they, would tell, they were telling me how anointed they were. But today they are anointed in their husband's room. Fantastic. If God truly anointed you, get to the street and go and, and save women. Hey. You want to use the hard work of someone else's ministry to, to, to show you anointed. Daughter of Jezebel. Many believers, they have lizard spirit spirit that is that's what that's what we we'll call them from now when you see anybody that likes to do things for his vain glory just a sister lizard spirit <laughs> brother lizard spirit <laughs> those that want to imp some people they pretend that. listen to me some workers they pretend mm. when i am not in the building oh, yes. they misbehave that's right Say again, sir. The moment I am pulling into the car park and they see my vehicle from far yeah. and they know my protocols are about to work on me, they fix up. Yeah. Lizard spirit. Say it again, sir. Eye yeah. service. No service. Wicked heart service. Yes, sir. Vain glory. Mm -hmm. If you cannot respect me in my absence, it means you will kill me in my presence. Hey. <laughs> Lizard spirit. On Sunday, I'm preaching a message called The Abominations of God. Jesus. On Sunday, I'm preaching a message titled The Abominations of God. The Abominations of God. That's Sunday's message. The Abominations of God. The Abominations of God. Many of you will weep on Sunday like, Oh God, how did I fall into this category? Lease that spirit. They will fall from the fence. They walk with big regalias. But when it comes to the simple things, then they're absent. Lizard spirit. Vain glory. Number five. How do you know that the spirit of God is absent? When you start celebrating everything you once stood against, mm. you know the Spirit of God has left you. The moment you start celebrating everything you once stood against, the Spirit of God has left you. When you start celebrating everything you once stood against, the Spirit of God has left you. It's called the Spirit of Rebellion. When you, once you start celebrating everything that you once stood against, the Spirit of God has left you. Once you start celebrating everything you once stood against, it means the Spirit of God has left you. There are people that God will tell you, you see that brother there, don't become his friend. You see that man, don't go close to him. The day that man becomes your best friend, it means the Spirit of God has left you. Light and darkness cannot mix. The day you start clapping with the people, listen. The day you start clapping hand and gisting with the people that fight your pastor. The spirit of God has left you. The day you start, you start behaving like people that you talked against in terms of bad character. The day you start behaving like them, the spirit of God has left you. The day you find nothing wrong in wickedness. The day you find nothing wrong in vain glory. 
Did they find nothing wrong in strife? Gossiping about a sister in church. Why is God using that boy more than me? Don't you know I'm anointed? Who anointed you? The granite from a father's village? The day you start celebrating those things, the spirit of God has left you. How can God show me? How can God show me that someone is wicked and tomorrow is my best friend? That means I have you cannot be the, you cannot be a friend to God's enemies. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. And the friend of my enemy is two times my enemy. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. The enemy of my enemy is my pal, my friend. And the friend of my friend is my friend. But the friend of my enemy is two times my enemy. Mm. There are many of you, you are laughing with people who are laughing with those that want to kill you. Hey. If you are not careful, they will waste your destiny before you know it. Mm. And prayer will not save you. Stop praying where God expects you to apply common sense. Try. Stop praying where God expects you to apply sense that is common. But it's unfortunate that common sense is no longer common and it's no longer cheap in our generation. Common sense. People that once ridiculed you and called you nothing, they try to break you and damage you. Suddenly you are friends with them. What will they offer you? Nothing. All they wanted all along is to see you come under their feet. And the friendship, your friendship to them is only going to give them access to such wicked agenda. It's not come. See, it's not compulsory to be friends with everybody. Look at me. I don't. If you hate me, to hell with your feelings. I go home. I eat fufu, a goosey, beggary. Hey. Shock all your cutter. Hard, up, rock everything, and I go to bed, and I sleep well. Do you think I came to ministry and I went into ministry to make friends? When God scattered my leg. I came to, many, to, to make friends. Were you there when I was having encounters and God was cut, using my leg to play football? Were you suffering the pain with me? I should come and start smiling, my, smiling with you. What are you, Maclean? Would, would you make my teeth whiter? So why open it at all to you? If you don't like me, that is the door. And if the door is too big, you can go through the vents. Just evaporate. Many, the problem with many people is that they cannot be alone. The problem with many is that you cannot be alone. You think you need someone. You need a friend. You need a party. You only need a pal. You need you need a you need crowd. You need group. You need group association. Before you know it, you will be, you will become an eagle flying with vultures. And a, and a lion walking with goats. The day you see a lion chewing grass, you know his best pal is a goat. The day a lion chews grass, you know his brother, his pal is a goat. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. But a company of fools, the Bible says, shall be destroyed. People might say, you might see my message too tough. But I pity you if this message burns you. It means you need to change. That's right. And if you don't like it, you can't stop the growth of my ministry. That's right. God has called me to raise a, rev a, a, revolu a revolutionary generation. Mm. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? Are you listening? You do a professor. Are you a professor? In the making. Quickly so we can pray. Check yourself. What are you celebrating today? How can you go from celebrating grace to celebrating those abusing grace? How can you go from a minister of fire 
to a minister that fire is pursuing out of church. Minister of fire to a minister of fire is pursuing out of church. And those kind of people will be the ones saying all nasty things to a bad pastor. But if we were to sit down and start analyzing, the person will run. I have seen them plenty in my life. Number six. How do you know that the spirit of God has left you? You will live life with the blind spots. You will always live life with the blind spots. You will always live life with the blind spots. Meaning, you, won't ha you have no insight, no oversight, no hindsight, no foresight, no long sight. I call it the blind sight. You will live life blindsided when the Spirit of God has left you. Even when you show such people the path, you show them this is the path to follow, they will, they, they would, they will, they will call you wicked for showing them the good path. Because they are already blind to the light. Even when you try to give them insight into the world that their lifestyle is leading to the destruction. I'm not talking about perfectness. I'm not talking about weakness. I'm talking about wickedness. You show them that this path is a wicked path. They will, they will give you every reason why it is a good path. Let me tell you something. The Lord said something to me. You cannot be under grace and be in the hospital. Okay. <laughs> when you bite the hand, ah. listen to me. See, when you bite the hand that has been preserving you, you will end up disgraced. Whoever doesn't like it, come and challenge me. When you bite the hand covering you in prayers, there will be a, a, a chemical reaction in the spirit. There will be a combustion in the spirit. Hey, see, there is something, listen to me, listen to me. There is something about grace that makes you so strong that even when you are doing over, over time of the gospel, you don't break down. If what I'm doing was done on my natural energy, I would have burnt out years ago. Finished. But how I stand to do this, I'm still going to minister by 10 you. And if, believe you me, if you put me on different platforms between now and tomorrow morning, I'll be preaching. Preaching. How? It's called the grace. Apostle Paul said, I am what I am by the word grace of God. I am what I am. Book of Corinthians. I am what I am by the grace of God. My grace is made sufficient for thee. Are you listening to me? I am what I am. You live in with the blind spot. You know what the blind spot is? What is the blind spot? It means you have now allowed the spirit of the Pharisee enter you. The blind spot is called the Pharisee spirit. In life, there are sixfold ministries. To God, he recognizes five. But in life, there are sixfold ministries. There is the prophetic, the teaching, the apostolic, evangelistic. The the, 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 the the pastoral and the Pharisee, and the Pharisee ministry. The Pharisee is the sixth fold ministry. The Pharisee spirit. They are the ones that everything must be in their own way or else. They are very anointed than others. Their pastor will tell them something. They will tell you, they will tell you how God is speaking to them. How can God bypass your shepherd and come to you? In the days when the voice of God was cast, God bypassed Eli and went to Samuel. He said the voice of God was cast. Our days, God's voice is not cast. The Holy Spirit is in us. 
can I don't understand this. How can a brother, you're a minister, you're not in church for cleaning, you're not in church for wiring, you're not in church for anything evangelism, but yet you will now come to church and tell us that God said we should do this in church. Would you listen to that? Story. <laughs> Spiritus. <laughs> Spirit of the lizard. Uh, you are absent, but yet you are telling us of God's presence in your house. The Bible says, forsaking not the gathering of the saint as many will do the moment you start forsaking the garden of the saint by legalizing anything you are going through the holy ghost has left you because the the longer jesus tarries the more our pain increases persecution will increase any pastor telling you have anything the world will get better that pastor is a liar from the pit of hell nothing is going to get better nothing will get better till jesus returns it's only going to get worse especially for the church so gathering as this as a, with the saints is pivotal to the preservation of your of your salvation the preservation of your salvation i don't think i will have many friends saying this preaching this kind of message tonight but don't worry sunday is going to be worse because i'm preaching the abominations of god so I want to see how you will like me after that one. Maybe you will stand up and slap me and I will slap you too and bundle you out. Let's go, sir. <laughs> ah. you slap me, boy. I give you the turn leg. Boy, send you out. Sunday, I'm preaching the message. The abominations of God. Seven ways on how to make money. 50 ways on how to multiply your increase. 17 ways on how to keep your marriage. Is that what Jesus called us come and preach? No, Don't know how to keep your marriage. It's your business. <laughs> Don't know how to make money. It's your business. Making money is simple. Just apply principle. Mm. Get up, walk. Don't labor to be rich. Just walk. Number two, find purpose. Number three, be faithful in little. You, you, you cannot manage 10 pounds, but you want God to give you a million pounds. Oh, the money will kill you. You are not faithful in 10 pounds. You are very stingy. Some people are so stingy. They, they, are stingy like they, they are stingy like the way a coffin keeps a dead body. <laughs> they are so stingy just as a coffin, a casket keeps a dead body. There is contribution in church that people are stingy. But after service, they will take the same money to go and buy pizza. That pizza will rot in their stomach. Hey. But yet, you want your church to be fine. When you walked in here the first time, what was your impression of this place? Very what? Cozy, personal. It makes you feel like who? Uh -huh. See that? It's like sitting room. You can sit on the floor, cross your leg, carry duvet, carry coffee, and start drinking coffee there. Hot chocolate. You, it's not going to church, and, and something is hanging like this. Cobweb is there. TV is looking hungry. Would you stay there? How does that glorify God? You are a worker in church. You cannot buy electric cable for church. And you want the God of the house to bless you. But after service, you will, pay, you will take 30 pounds to go and buy pizza. You go and buy Chinese. You, you will turn to Chinese man that day. <laughs> we are laughing. But this is why many are in financial bondage. That's right. Many are in financial bondage because of their greed. Man of God, I want you to pray for me to prosper. But you are not faithful in your tithe. That's why life is tight for you. You are not... See, listen. Close your hands. Fist. Close your Lock your fist. Lock it. Lock it. Now, take this. Take it. Take. Take it now. Take. I want you to try and take it. No, no. No, no. Don't open your fist. Take it. Is it possible? How then can God bless you when you are stingy? How can God put in your hand when your hand is locked? Listen. When your hand is... When a man that is greedy will suffer spiritual leprosy. Lepers cannot grab anything because their hands are heating up. Many, many, many people's hands have turned to leprosy in the spirit because they are too greedy. Mm. Mm. 
You've never given to the poor. Tight, you don't pay. Offering, you don't give. You are too stingy. You want others to spend on you, but you don't spend on yourself and people. Even yourself, you are too stingy to yourself. Yourself is saying, spend on me now. You are keeping money like you take it to your grave. It's more blessed to give than to receive. To give than to receive is more blessed. May God make you a giver. 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 You a giver. In the name of Jesus. What does it mean when we say Pharisee before we pray? Pharisees are those that act like they've seen far. But it's a lie. Pharisee. The Pharisee spirit. Why is she wearing mini skirt to church? I don't like the when she wore mini skirt to church. Is she a bitch? Is she a, is she a, is she a, is she a king prom fry hole? What is wrong? Why is she wearing many skin to church? Why has she got her boobs all hanging out like that? I go on grand kid. I had to report this since that to the pastor. What is wrong? What is wrong with her? She's got her mini skirt so short. I think she's trying to get my man. <laughs> Maybe if you learn to keep your mouth short, you might you might just keep the man. Hey, you sure go. He shock. <laughs> he shock. Maybe if you learn to train your mouth, you might just keep that man. Hey. One she got many skirt. She came, look at the way she's gazing at my man. She's looking at my man. I, 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 look, 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 see, 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 where, where is he? Come here, come stay next to me before she, the mini skirt lady takes you away from me. <laughs> if you learn to keep your mouth short, you might just keep that man. Hey. Pharisee spirit. Like you are better. Why? Because you wear long dress. You can have a long dress, but you are nothing more than a prostitution home. Prostitute is not just in, in, in sleeping with any dog. Prostitution is when you are not loyal to anything in life. Prostitution is when you are not loyal to anything in life. Even men are the worst prostitutes. Women, women suffer for what men get away with. That is why me, I always say, me, I don't, me, I don't judge women. In fact, I always say, I, 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 women are strong. I hate women. Women? Ah, they're strong, I hate them. <laughs> Everybody, for instance, people say, ah, I want to see the man of, man of God one on one. Watch this. A lady comes to church. Our breast, she wears coste bra. You know what? What's coste? Coste bra is stand up bra. A, a, a man chester is chesting out. The, she will now wear a very, very, she will wear nylon material skirt. A Barcelona is there. She now wears it so short, you would think she's about to jump badminton net. Then she says, I want to see the man. One on one and when she wants to see the man she wants to see the man where the protocols are far she now sits down next to the pastor cross leg all you see is fresh legs father the moment the pastor's <laughs> wife does <clears throat> like this she's not happy this pastor's wife is a wicked woman she doesn't want me to receive my blessings from the man of god mm -mm. so many pastor's wife they've learned to accommodate people they see people's maturity in the way they dress. Okay, maybe, you know, not everybody. There are people that have come to this church. From the first two, three times they came, you can tell that they don't really have, not everybody knows what a church cloth is. Some people just feel, once I look nice in church, I look nice. It's when they get to the place, after two, three, four times, they begin to realize, okay, okay, that's the type of dress I need to buy. They buy it. Mm. That's the kind of shoe I need to buy. They buy it. Oh, I don't need to wear seven inch Shoes, I need to go two inch. They buy it. They start, they start regulating themselves to what they are seeing. Mm. And no, people that love them will not judge them. That's right, sir. People that love them will not condemn them. 
but Miss, Mrs. Nicode, Mrs. Nicodemus, Mrs. Nicodemus will be angry. Why is she going to make me scared? Watch this. Let me, let me share this testimony I want to share so we can pray. Everybody will be coming, you know, to see me. Yes. One day, someone was just talking. Talking anyhow, talking anyhow. Mama, I, I, Mama said something and, la and I laughed. Mama said, uh, someone was talking and so Mama said to the person, so, we do allow your husband to sit one-on-one -on -one with, with um, some single sisters. No! No! Ah! We died here. How can my husband be sitting with single ladies in the church? Oh, but it's okay for you, lady, to sit down one on one with the pastor. That kind of person is a Pharisee. And it's plenty in church. Pretense, thank you, pretense. Spiritus! The, the spirit of a what? A lizard. It's plenty in church. Hashtag Alangba. <laughs> Hashtag Spiritus. It's okay for you to stand next to the pastor as a man. Do you think I'm not flesh and blood? There are some things some women wear. I would say Jesus. Jesus. I have to call the name. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> I say Jesus. There are times my spiritual daughters, when they dress, I will have to find a way. If mama is missing, I will find a way. I will call say, this thing we are wearing. Please. Ah. I will just walk away speaking the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Asking for help. <laughs> there are times when I will say, mama, go and tell your daughter to at least let her wear, maybe carry overall jacket or because some women are naturally endowed. Thank Barcelona and Manchester fully loaded. <laughs> and it's not a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. Glorious. Because it's a blessing. Glorious. <laughs> How can you have all that and man is chasing man to sleep with a man? My father, my you, are, you, you, are, you are turning an, ex, an exit to an entry point. And it's normal in church. Such are now becoming music directors in church. And we are lifting up holy hands to put down what glory. Glory from the backside. Spiritus. It's called the spirit of the Pharisee. Watch out for such people. Watch out for such people. We're going to rise up. We're going to pray tonight. And you are going to pray against six of these things. But most important, you're going to say, Father, create in me a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Let's rise up as we pray. Create in me, create in me a clean heart. Oh, Lord. Renew, say, and renew the right spirit within me. Create, say, create in me a clean Cast me not away, cast me not away from your presence.
restore, restore, say, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Shabbat Shalom. There was a day before we pray. There was a day I was reading about Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul said something. He said to live is Christ. To die is gain. Then there was a part Apostle Paul said something. He said if I perish. I perish. When are we going to get to that place where even with one leg. We are still ready. To go for Jesus. With pain. I remembered when when some ministers ministers are ordained were fighting this one for serving in church they were they were fighting him ministers ordained they were saying he's trying to impress me if you don't impress your pastor you can't impress jesus let me think jesus said if you cannot love your brother you cannot love me meaning if you cannot impress your pastor your pastor is the representative of christ to the church if your pastor don't see that you are actually doing well and approve, your pa pastors are supervisors of your labor in God's vineyard. So if they're not impressed, Christ cannot be impressed, especially when the pastor is working. I'm not a lazy man, though. Shall I surprise you? The, the only spirit I should keep. What I wanted to say, you'll be shocked. I do electric, electric, electric. I do painting. I do nailing. I do cut everything I can play a drum I can put one or two strings on the keyboard <laughs> octopus anointing <laughs> and then you a minister you don't even know where the switch of the auditorium is and you want to hold mic and collect mount which mount are you catching you are catching the spirit of the lizard that's all if I perish I perish listen this message is not to bash. It's, to, it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. They were fighting him, him. Let me tell you something. No matter how anointed you are, especially in the Western world, as a pastor, one of the things a genuine pastor pray for is mini see a minister who is good with sound and music that submits to your ministry. Every time we bring instrumentalists here, we pay them money. Every Sunday here, we pay minimum three to four hundred pounds to instrumentalists. Oh, Sunday you were dancing, you were doing masha, masha. As we are marching, we are, we are counting the pastelling. We are marching to them too. You think it's free? So when a pastor, they are serving, they say pastor is taking the money. Which money is pastor taking? Someone that came to me. His father is a pastor. Him. But he said, you, you are my own father. He told his father, I have found my spiritual father. And I want to submit here. Two years I've been training. Oh, this is the third. No, three years, three and a half now. Training him. I told him, if you follow me, I bet you your generation will follow you. If you follow me, your generation in time will follow you. Now they are calling him up. And he has been getting invitation. The last one he got was, was it Switzerland or Cyprus? told him don't go anywhere he said yes sir Swiss, he said yes sir i said don't go he said i was shocked some people would have gone they would call me from switzerland and i sir you know the invitation came at 2 a.m in the morning i couldn't call your phone i had to jump on the flight listen to me son whether they want to talk or not faithfulness pays I will repeat what I said to you in secret when they were not there. If you follow me, they will follow you. Whether they like it or not. Oh, oh yes. Okay. You're going to lift your hands and you're going to pray. You're going to pray. Father, create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lift your voice and begin to pray where you are. Two minutes. Create in me a clean heart renew a steadfast spirit within me followership is what best leadership if you don't know how to follow 
you won't learn how to let you won't learn how to lead others that follow you father create in me a clean heart renew in me a steadfast spirit spirit of steadfastness to be steady and fast steady and fast steady and fast in the name of Jesus maybe you don't understand what steadfastness means steadfastness means to be steady and fast why did why did Jacob curse Reuben why did he curse Reuben he said because Reuben is unstable as water you are not steady today you are hot you are cold Jesus, God, God said if you are neither hot nor cold I will spit you out of my mouth God doesn't use inconsistent people no matter how much you pray you can be, you can be praying but you are inconsistent with your, with your presence how can he use you before the reward will come the sacrifice we are going to take this last prayer we share the grace Father, may I, listen to me, may I never live life without your spirit. May I never live life without your spirit. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, may I never live life without your spirit. May I never live life without your spirit. May I never live life. Please, Lord, never, no matter how well, how, how much I achieve for the kingdom, never leave me, never allow your spirit depart from me. May I never live life without your spirit, Lord. Lord, help me, fill me up, Lord. Renew, renew a steadfast spirit, a spirit that is steady and is fast, a spirit that is steady and fast. Father, may I never live life without your spirit. May I never live life without the presence of the Holy Ghost. Begin to speak to the Lord. You have two minutes. Two minutes to cry to God. Two minutes to cry. You are not bigger than this message. There are many in departments. Because of you in the department, people have left the department. You are an ordained minister, but yet you are you, 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 you your presence is scattering everybody. You open my church scatter. Then you come and say, God is speaking. That is the absence of the spirit of God in you. Lord, may I never live life without your spirit. It's the most dangerous thing to live life without the Spirit of God in you. May I never live life without the Spirit of God. Open your mouth and pray. May I never live life without the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands I pray for you. Very simple prayer points I want to speak over your life. I pray from this day you will never operate or feel emptiness you will never walk with a repulse with a repulsive spirit towards godly directive and God and God's grace covering in the name of Jesus may you never ever be possessed by demons may you never walk with the spirit of Joe party I pray you will only celebrate and stand by things that are godly May you never join a gang of those that rebel against God's agenda. And I pray lastly, that you will never live life with a blind spot. You will never be blindsided. But you will live life with insight, with oversight, with hindsight, with foresight, and with long sight in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Where a man suddenly cannot be advised or counseled, where a man thinks is is big, nobody can talk to him. May you never get to that place. And I, I want to pray for myself, Father. May I join any man? May I never get to a place where you cannot talk to me anymore? I pray for you under the sound of my voice. May you never, you will never get to a place where the Spirit of God cannot rebuke you. May you never get to a place where it's one thing for a man to make a mistake or fall short through weakness. And it's another thing for you to now justify the weakness. That, that justification now becomes wickedness. May you never justify weaknesses. I pray that in your weakness, you humble yourself and grace be multiplied to you. 
in the name of Jesus and so shall it be in Jesus most precious name we pray amen